on this episode of Carnage. You asked for it, so we're going to show you how to tackle all the additional wiring on your Haltech install. Last week on Carnage, we showed you all the Haltech gear we're fitting into our Drag Challenge U. We mounted our Nexus R5, we mounted our IC7 dash, we ran the loom, the pre-terminated loom into the car to work out, you know, where everything was going to fit. And we asked the question if you wanted to see how we tackle all the additional wiring that you need to do, you know, because this car is getting a lot of sensors, a lot of extra hardware. Um, coils that normally don't fit on these things so there's a whole bunch more that we need to do to make this thing work and we asked the question if you guys wanted to see it because it is pretty time consuming and for some people probably a little bit boring and you overwhelmingly said yes we want to see it I think two people said no and 200 people said yes so I think that's a pretty overwhelming response so we're gonna run you through the uh, just the nitty gritty of how we do this and how you can tackle these projects at home yourself. And uh, we thought while we're getting this started during the, you know, intervening time between episodes, I've been making sure that we could uh, mount stuff like uh, our coils have to be in position before we start wiring them. So I decided to get a little bit fancy and I downloaded a CAD drawing program, I've never used one before and smashed out some CAD designs, took them over to Adam at MPW, and the boys over there have let me cut them out on their plasma table. And we have coil mounts designed by Scotty, and uh, I'm pretty happy with them. There's a bit of a story that goes with it as well though. So in designing the, uh, the stuff, I designed it off the driver's side rocket cover, and that design, it looks great, fits perfect. And we thought, oh, we'll just print out another one to run on the passenger side. But of course, the covers are different, driver side to passenger. So the passenger one doesn't fit quite as nice. Uh, so while the coil position is going to be that same position, I decided to bang out another design. So this is the passenger side coils. And this one will fit perfect. So my first job, I guess, is to transfer all those coils to this plate, mount it to the rocket cover, and we will have our coils in the correct position. But got to say, I'm pretty chuffed by designing these myself. Never done it before, and then taking the program over. We did have a couple hiccups in that some lines weren't connected and stuff, and the boys helped me out with that. So Adam and Ave, big shout to those guys in running me through some of this stuff. And uh, but yeah, pretty happy with how it's all turned out. So. Let's transfer those to this plate and then get this on the engine and uh, we'll show you how it fits. So the coils I've got here are the Howtech IGN 1A coils. Um, really high output. Unfortunately, the hole spacing on them is not the correct hole spacing for the rocket covers. They're just out by like a few millimeters, which is a bit of a pain. So that is why we have to make these coil mount brackets. But yeah, these things are gonna be really cool. They are a five wire setup. We'll get into that later, but, um, but yeah, really high output coil. So we'll get these on our plate. Maybe we won't get these on our plate because I might have fucked up a measurement. <laughs> God damn it! I thought I had that right. Damn, I needed to make that a little bit deeper. So, all right, back to the old plate for the moment and I'll redesign that one a little bit. Cut it out again. But yeah, the coil position won't change. It's just a matter of uh, where these holes are and these holes. They're in the wrong spot. That's all right. It's the beauty of computers. You can change a couple numbers and it all becomes right. It's just more alloy, that's all.
Okay, so I've made a little adjustment to the design, so now the coils will fit in our other plate properly. Uh, we'll get that cut out when we go over to Adam's next, but the coil position isn't going to change. The coils will be in the same spot. Uh, we just made some little adjustments to the pattern. So, now we need to move on to the proper wiring, and we'll start by doing some battery cables. So the Nexus ECU uses these Shorelock connectors. They're a good thing. They just clip on and you just push a little button to release, bang, quick and easy to release. But they do require crimping and Howtech make a crimp up for this. So we're gonna be using a zero gauge cable, which is 50 mil square. That's what these uh, connectors are set up for. So what we'll have to do is unscrew that that part goes over the sheath. There's your seal. So just push that back. Okay. Bin. Always be careful with a Stanley knife and doing this stuff. Never put your finger under there while you're doing that. Ask me how I know. I have a scar that runs from there to there when the Stanley knife. Stanley knife slipped and went all the way to the bone. Yeah, that was not a fun day. So once we've got that crimped, just slide the, the seal over there. And then screw our end on. We have a weather tight seal, perfectly crimped. So that's ready to go on the ECU. All right, now for the black side. I've shown you my little insulation trick when uh, gathering up all the wires in the past, but there's another trick you can use. It's probably a little bit simpler for some people. So you just slide the end off. Of course, it all splays out. Then you get a piece of, uh, like just a little cable tie. Brings all the strands together, slide it towards the end. Put your connector on there, whoops. Make sure you get all your strands in there. That's why I like my method better, but anyway. There we go. All right, you can just cut the cable tie. All righty. We have our power cables terminated. So now we'll just plug them in, run those off to our battery, because that's where they've got to connect to, and then we'll have power to our ECU. Something I haven't talked about, because I am an old man and have an old man's knees, when you're working on a car like this, get yourself a little one inch foam pad, you know, just for, you know, like a playground thing. Protects the knees, it's a lifesaver. All right, cabling time. Click. Click. 
So you may have noticed I have painted in the uh, fuel tank area. I used this big ass can. It is turbo spray system, Rust-Oleum, even though they're not a sponsor anymore. It's like, yeah, it's a cool product for covering large areas with paint very rapidly. It has an amazing coverage. It's just like this massive fan of spray and covered that in no time at all. And I actually got three coats out of that can, but, uh, but yeah, pretty cool. Look at the size of the thing. It's like the length of my forearm, it's huge. Just going to cable tie these in place temporarily. So I know they're in the right position. And they'll run down along there. All right. Battery box or battery tray needs to go in place. So as I may have mentioned before, I'm going to mount the battery tray down here on the floor under the, um, the tray cover. It doesn't need to be boxed in or anything. It's going to be just tray bolted to the floor, battery bolted into position, and then cabled appropriately. But yeah, we need to bolt it to the floor first. Right there is our position. some bolts. Okay, so we're going to cut these to their approximate sizes. So, there's our negative. Positive, I think we'll run around the back here. We don't want too much excess because this stuff's 40 bucks a metre, or at least it was from JCAR. I'm probably not going to buy it from there anymore. So moving on to other items that need to be bolted to the car to get wired up, we have our drive-by wire pedal. So I've just bought this online. Again, it's a pedal recommended by Adam. And um, basically made sure I got this and made sure I ordered the correct plug for it. So jumped on the website at EFI Hardware, made sure I got the right plug. So that's the plug for that pedal. While I was there, I also got our coil lead plugs. So these will plug into our Powtech loom like so and then we can wire them up to our coils. So we'll get started that on that in a sec. And also bought a whole bunch of these uh, DTM three pin connectors, which are favored by Haltech for AVIs and stuff like that. So all our AVIs like those, this will give me the right plugs for those, so I bought about 10 of those, which will keep us powering along. So, got our coil plugs there. Um, I've done a rough sort of measure up and made up a bracket in the CAD program to mount to the original pedal um, mounting points. So hopefully that'll put it in the right spot. We'll do a, do a bracket based off that soon, but yeah. We'll hold off on that for the moment. Let's move on to the coils and start making up some coil looms. Before we get started on talking about wiring looms, let's talk wiring. So I've been down to uh, buy some good wiring. So I've got some Raychem stuff here and uh, this stuff is a lot better than your average stuff you'll get from say uh, Autobahn or Bunnings or Repco, whatever. Not picking in anyone in particular, but I'm just saying this, 
the stuff that you'll buy, like proper automotive wiring, is better than, say, the stuff you'll buy from a generic parts store. So you can see the diameters of those wires are the same. This stuff from the generic range is like 15 amp. This stuff is 12 gauge and that'll handle 25 amps. No worries at all, yet same diameter. The sheathing is also resistant to heat, like up over 150 degrees. It's resistant to chemicals like E85, anything like that. This stuff will just shrug it off. So much better. I've also got some uh, 16 gauge here, which is really thin. Uh, this stuff is what we'll use to actually go into our connectors as, uh, by themselves because this stuff's too thick to go into, say, a connector, but we can move the voltage or the amperage down through the car with this stuff, splice it out into multiple connectors in this stuff. This stuff will go into the connectors. It'll push in and click in really nicely where the generic stuff will just bend and fold and just not work as well. So really good for like AMP connectors, you know, with your back of the dash or ECU plugs or anything like that. This stuff is a lot better. So we'll use this, we'll use some flexible sheathing, we'll use some, uh, we've got a whole heap of DR25 heat shrink here as well. So let's start making up some wiring looms for our coils. So we got ABCD. When you're working with this flexible sheathing, tends to fray out a little bit in the ends if you uh, don't keep an eye on it. So just snip it off clean and then hit it with a bit of heat. That way it doesn't fray out the ends. Do it to there. So with these IGN 1A coils, as I said before, there are five pin connectors. So when we did the Lexan, those R35 style coils, or actually VQ37, whatever, they're three pin, so three wire. They're relatively simple when you're talking about that compared to this. So this, we have a signal, we have power, you know, that's pretty standard. But then we have three different earths, all right? So we have, a charging earth, a discharging earth, and then a reference earth. So, and they all have to go different places. So, what I'm gonna have to do is, and this is what I've already started doing, is marking them with red tape. So these are gonna be our charging earth. So they will have to end up being earth to the engine block. The loom already has a discharging earth into it. So they'll go to the cylinder head, and then I'll have to run a reference earth, and then I'll have to go all the way back to the battery, but I'll do that with some of this heavy gauge stuff as well. So, yeah, it's gonna complicate things. It means instead of just, you know, a dozen wires, it means we've got, what, four coils, five wires each, so we're up to 20 wires. So, yeah, there's a lot of terminating, a lot of wires, and some of them are all the same color, so, joy. All right. Let's get our discharging earths in there. So these are going to go to our plug. So just to give you an idea of how much wire these looms will consume, I went and got 10 metres of um, 16 gauge and I've got 
maybe three metres left and I have only done one side. So yeah, if you're wondering how much wire these things are going to use up, a lot is the answer. Wow. all the others to length. One down, many more to go. But wow, this should look all right when it's all done. So now we can heat, shr heat shrink that down and that is one plug done. One plug. And so, after many hours of cursing and swearing, we have that, our coil loom, or one side of. We still have to make the other side. So basically, our four coils to our plug, and then we've got some wires here to extend out to, well, that goes the block, that goes the battery, and that white one will be our power for the coils. Now you may say, well, why hasn't the plug up here got power in it? Um, and it does on the loom, but long story short, we're gonna power, because these coils draw so much power, we're going to power them externally off of this um, nice big wire. And I've actually wired these up, so no two coils side by side are drawing power at the same time sort of thing, because the firing order, you know, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two, well, the five and seven, I have wired them opposing, so in theory they could be drawing power at the same time. So what I've done is wired them, so one is wired with five, and three is wired with seven, so no two coils are drawing power at the same time in theory, if that makes sense. So, we've done that, this should work great. I've got to make the other side, but this is time consuming stuff. I mean, there's 20 connections right up here in this end, plus seven there, plus a whole bunch of splices in there to take, you know, those 20 wires down to, well, essentially five in that plug and three there. So not seven, but yeah, it's time consuming. This has taken me the best part of a day to make. And now I'm still going to make another one. So obviously we're not going to show you all the wiring in this episode, but this will give you an idea of how much is involved. You know, yes, you buy a Howtech, yes, you buy a pre-terminated loom, but if you're adding extras, it is all very time consuming. It's worth it, but um, when your installer says, I have to charge you X amount of dollars for doing all this extra stuff, you can understand where that money goes because there's a lot of materials in here, a lot of time in here, and um, the end result will be worth it, but you know, if you're paying for it to be done, 
expect to pay for it. Anyway, I've also modified my coil plate, so I'm going to move my coils over and I'm going to bolt it to the engine and see how it looks like on the engine. So once we get our fuel rail and injectors and everything in there, that's all going to sit in nice and neat with each other. I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, off the Howtech loom, the coil lead is actually quite long, so long enough to reach the other side of the engine. We don't need it that long. So what I might do is jump on the web, order that plug, and then shorten that one so when it plugs into here, we don't have this big untidy loop you know so that just plugs into there but we end up with this loop so what I might do is get the plug shorten that just give it a whole neater job not neater finish and um, yeah should be pretty good to go so as you can see there's a lot involved in this and we've only touched on it and Unfortunately, we've had a short filming week. I've had to take my son to the hospital for checkups and stuff like that. So we've had a short filming week. So, so we haven't had to, been able to show you all the ins and outs of all the wiring, but we, I think we've dipped our toe in the water, giving you guys a bit of a look into what's involved in just taking your build to the next level with all the extra terminating and stuff that you have to do. And just things that you probably didn't think about, like mounting drive-by wire pedals, you know, mounting battery up the back, terminating heavy cables and stuff like that. So I hope we've given you a little bit of an insight into that. What I'm going to do is hook into this stuff. You're going to see it off camera. And then next week, hopefully, we can start talking engine stuff and move on to the rest of the project because um, I don't want to get bogged down into this wiring stuff, you know, in the videos. So let's just keep moving. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see you in future episodes of carnage.